Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. For those of you who are new to the channel, uh, there's multiple ways that you can help support the channel. First off, you can subscribe. Uh, you can also come to my Discord channel and join me there. Um, you can also leave me comments, thumbs up. You can even hit the bell for notifications. And other ways to help support. Currently, right now, we have... Um, PayPal for donations. Uh, we also have uh, the ability for you to purchase coffee. I have a sponsor for coffee, which is Strava Craft Coffees, and the link is in the description for that. And uh, you can purchase coffee through them, and that helps me out because if I sell enough coffee for them, they send me free coffee. And if you don't drink coffee, then you can always buy coffee and have it shipped directly to me. And because I drink coffee, I love it. I drink it every day. So, um, moving into what we're going to do on this project, and this is going to be a starter of a parallel thing besides what's already going on. And this is kind of get an idea of how to start prototyping a map. And I haven't done anything. I am using my simple multiplayer team template for version 4.23. Um, I'm currently not supporting any other versions right now um, because 4.23 seems to be the most stable overall. It can be upgraded to 4.25. I just have not done it yet because uh, I've had no need for it. Um, if you want to get the simple multiplayer team template, you can send $20 U.S. currency through PayPal. Uh, just get with me on Discord and any one of the open channels and let me know. But essentially what you end up getting is <coughs> if you play a standalone game, to be able to see the the network features of what it is you get um, steam functionality this is my steam username and avatar you can see access team community while playing um, it uses a steam developer app id so it will come up saying that you are um, uh, playing space war for right now until you decide to publish a game and get your own steam app id and since this does use steam architecture you will need steam account and have it running in the background you can go into single player and it'll go in. Essentially, it's just a basic map. You run around, do nothing, jump. You can hit V, change your view. Um, yeah, that's about it. Hit escape. You can either resume game or go back to the main menu. Go to multiplayer, and you can either host or find a game. If you want to find a game, you hit find. If nothing pops up, you can hit find. It'll search for 10 seconds before it gives up. And if any games come up, there will be a join button. Just click on the join button and you can connect right into it. If you want to host your own, you can actually just put in um, frog, frog monkey, whatever, and click make. It will create a session, and now your friends can find your, your session that you've created and join in. So if you want to quickly put together a multiplayer game where your friends can connect to you and you can play it together, then this is the way to do it. But the main menu and exit game. So, moving into the actual map making itself, what we're going to do is we already have a folder called Maps, and we're going to go ahead and go to File, New Level, and we're going to use a VR Basic. Okay? And the reason why I'm using this right here, I can go to here, here, and the pyramid, delete these, and I can just move these things down. Um, say if you're going to prototype a map, actually let's go ahead and do a different style map. Let's go ahead and do uh, default. Don't save. And if we go in default, what I like to do here is again, I'll grab these guys and I'm just going to throw them underground. They don't need to be above. I get rid of that because it's not necessary. And I also get rid of the original floor because we don't need that either. And then what I'm going to do is go to a BSP Geometry. I don't have any material selected whatsoever. And then I'm just going to, with that, I'm going to drag a box in here. And first off, we need to change our game mode to third-person game mode. I'm going to go to Details, and I'm going to change my location to 0, 0, and negative 5. And then I'm going to change my X, Y, and Z on the brush settings to... 5,000 by 5,000 by 10. 
and then it always forgets that, so we'll go back to negative 5, and if we hit play and select a viewport, we're standing on the ground and everything's lovely, we have a place to start off with. Okay, now I'm going to grab this and I'm just drag it back to negative 2000, and that's going to move my starting point so that when we're building things, we're not going to get in the way. The next thing you should always do is right click, make a new folder, and make a place for your stuff. So with everything in there, you can minimize that and keep this area clean and organized so you know how to find everything is the next key, key feature. When you're creating stuff, I'd say if you're going to prototype, keep in mind that the gray squares, the light gray and dark gray, are both the same size. Each one is going to be 100 units. I don't know why it's pulsating, but 100 units by 100 units. And if you look at the smaller ones, these are 10 units by 10 units. So you have a scale. By not having a material on your ground, you have the ability to work with it quite nicely. So building your first prototype map is just simply creating something for you to view and see. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go ahead and if I want I can go ahead and apply a material. I've already supplied some in the materials folder and let's just do blue. Okay. Now whenever I drag a BSP geometry into the map it's going to take that material. It's got to compile the shaders first but and I'm going to always put it at zero and zero for my starting location. You can see now We've got a blue cube in the center of our map. Now, when you're creating things, something to keep in mind, your player typically takes up a 100 by 100 by 200 tall area. So when you're creating doors, that's your minimum that you would want to do is 100 by 100 by 200 for doors. So with this, now whenever you reselect your box brush and you notice that the pivot point is going to be directly in the center and that's okay we can work with that but a little trick that I found that you can do is when you're creating a building as a prototype template and you start having some weird terrain you're gonna need a base for the floor anyway so what I generally do is the first box is going to be the actual base of the building including the the floor so and also you want to keep in mind keep for a organized system for building a town and whatnot you know that 100 by 100 is your player a typical hallway tends to be 300 by 300 by 300 and I actually have meshes in here called a hall tool so that would be your average hallway to think about 300 by 300 by 300 is your minimum dimension for a player walking through and for a player you could just drag this peg around and see okay does he fit through here you know, without having that directly go inside and hit play and walk around on the map. But I'm going to grab this. I'm going to make the base for my building. Another thing that I keep in mind is I try to stick to a minimum of 500 by 500 for my floor pieces or building dimensions in increments of 500. So if I were to change, I'm not going to use these tools right up here. I'm going to use my brush settings and I'm going to go to 500. 500. Now this is going to be my minimum for what I want to do for the footprint of a place holder in the map. When you start doing that it makes it so much easier to place these into a map and coordinate the location if the pivot points in the right location as well. Um, if you're going to use a center pivot like this then you may consider doing it at even numbers instead of odd numbers. So but 500 by 500 is my preferred that I like to go with. But we're actually going to make this 1000 by 1000 and we're going to change the Z height to 10. And now we can move this to 0 and you can see it puts it on the ground with only a little bit sticking up. It is also going into the ground a little bit as well which is kind of hard to see which is fine. This is going to be our, the base for our platform. When we actually put our building in, it's going to be another block. 
So let's actually come in here for contrast. I'm going to use a red. I'm going to select it and then drag my box in here and deselect it. And now I'm going to have a red box. So I'm going to go back in here again, 0, 0, and we're going to leave it at 100. We'll change the, the Z for that in just a moment. So now we can change this to 1000 by 1000. It's going to sit directly on top of that. However, I want to set the height of it to 400. So whatever you use for the height here, you need to use half of that for here if you're working off of a zero value. So if I do that, then that's going to be 200. Now keep in mind, that's going to put it directly on the floor. And if we look inside, it's sticking through the floor still. But that's okay. Um, let's actually take that to 205. And now, it's a solid block. We don't want it to be a solid block, so we can check hollow. If we want this to be a building that we can actually go into, then we'll do this to hollow. But if you're just putting a a sample building there, all you need is just the blocks. It becomes a building block for your location. You can see it's actually hovering a little bit above the ground. So I would actually probably do it a little bit less. 205. So if you wanted to add a floor in, there's other things you can do. If you want the box to be a, a building that you can enter, then all you're going to have to do at this point is create another box geometry using the same color as the wall, or same material as the wall, and you're just going to change your dimensions. I'm going to change it to the X is going to be the depth. You can see X, Y, and Z right here. So X depth is going to be 20. The Y is going to be to my left and right as I'm looking at it here, and I'm going to change that to um, 120, which is fine. The Z height of 200 is going to be fine. And now all I want to do is make sure that I'm zeroed up there, and remember this is just a prototype. We're not trying to make finished quality buildings here. And we want to make this subtractive. So now we have created a doorway going into our building by using that uh, subtractive. So if we go in here now, it's kind of hard to see because it's all the same color. And it's not going to reflect anything on lighting because these are not static meshes. These are BSP geometries. By using the same color for the material for the subtractive one, it fills in the, the material for the door frame. But you can put whatever material you want on there. You can use the um, the starter pack and actually get you um, some materials to work with, like a wood texture and things like that. But if you're just trying to make temporary placeholders, it's probably not a bad idea to use the uh, starter pack. So if you want to replicate this building and be able to just drop it in wherever you want, you now have four BSP ge uh, geometries to work with. They're going to be different colors. We can actually take this from right here, the blue one, and this is going to be a trick that I do. Um, and I'm going to change this to floor. This one is going to be door. So that I, these are just temporary names, but it helps you to know what you're looking at. And this is a building. So if we want to combine these together, if you just click here and click here, look where it puts your pivot point now. We got lucky on this one because the floor is now the bottom of that. But if it wasn't there, if we did this, this, and this, now look where your pivot point is. It's right there in the center of the building. So I want to make sure that I click the floor as the last piece that I have selected so it uses that as my pivot point. And now I can come over here to my brush settings, expand right here, create static mesh, tell it where you want to go, be organized, put them in appropriate places, 
and we're going to call this SM Proto House or building or whatever you want to call it. And then when you create static mesh, it's going to replace those BSB geometries with that. Now, if you want to be able to go back and edit this again before you do anything, you can hit Control Z and it's going to return them back to that. But you also have your static mesh here that you can now drag into the map. I'm actually going to take these and just delete them off of the map. Now, if I drag this into the map, to look, I can now put this at 0, 0, and 0. It's telling me that I need to build my lighting now. It's actually an item that can react to the lighting a lot better. Sometimes you're going to have some issues like that. There are a few things you can do to, to kind of correct that, but remember these are just prototype buildings. They're just here to get the point across. So what I'm going to do is, if you notice, walking back and forth through here, but now we have no collisions whatsoever. There's a couple ways that we can correct this, and we can go into our static mesh for our house. Technically, these are placeholders, doesn't really matter, but we still like to have some kind of collision. And I'm going to go to collision here and show simple collision. There is none. Okay, nothing is showing up different than what we already saw. Now, you could just come over here and do collision. If this is a building you're not going into, then you can just do add box simplified collision, and now it's um, got a collision. Hit save, and let's go ahead and hit save all here. So we can save our map, and this needs to go into our maps folder. And we're going to call this our build map, so that we know we're building stuff here. So now if we try to go over here, we can't walk through the wall, but we also can't walk through the door. So if this was a building that we can't go inside of anyway, then this is perfectly fine. Um, but if you want to be able to enter it, now if we look at our collision again, it's showing simple. We can see the green outline there. But we need to be able to get inside there. Now you can also change your materials here for like the... The base of the, the building is now blue. I can change that to whatever color I want. Uh, same thing here. I can change that. So you can either create your own custom. So I can go into Collision and Delete Selected Collision. Or Remove Collisions, whichever you prefer. Now there is no collisions to it whatsoever, again. You can make your own custom collision. So if you add a box collision in, you can actually take that. And now when you click on it, you need to be able to click on the actual collision itself. And you can actually scale the collision using these tools. And you probably want to do uh, uncheck snapping. So you can actually make that for the floor, and then you're going to have to make another one to scale it this way for the walls, and then you have to do it for the opening, so you're going to end up with more collisions here. And it's an easy thing to do, but if you're prototyping, the fastest way to go about this is not always the best way, but as you're coming through here, come to Collisions, Collision Complexity, and use complex as simple and hit save that is going to give you the ability to walk in and out of that building without any problems right now we're also going to go to our general settings and open this up and our light map resolution I'm going to change that to like 128 and then I'm going to come down here to light map coordinate index doesn't really matter what you put in there it's only going to come up to you know like one or whatever so you want to have that as your light map coordinate index and this so that whenever you're building your light mapping um, it's going to be usable at this point so now if I hit play come into my map I can't walk through there but I can walk through the door and you can see the lighting has changed again it's a prototype you're still gonna have weird light leaks in the, the walls and stuff so if we actually do build 
build lighting only, so we can do a lighting build. We'll see what happens now when we actually do a build. When prototyping, I don't usually do lighting builds until like I've done a lot and I'm ready to, to sample things. So, as soon as this completes, we'll go ahead and, and take a look at it again. So, bang, building lighting. This is all we've got is one building here, and we should be done in just a second. Alright, so now, let's go ahead and save all. Now, we come over here, and we actually have physical lighting. It's dark in here now. And by changing the light map coordinate index, we got rid of the bleeds through the wall, and it's a lot better. We can actually see the, the light coming in from the sun, and that's it. You can get as creative as you want to, but sometimes simple is better. Because now, if I want to create an entire town using this as a, my basic template, I can just... And you're going to have to rebuild your lighting, too. You can see it's going to leave the shadows there. So now you can do that, and you can control c control v and paste copies of it. Remember, try to keep in mind that your player is going to be... You know, need that 100 by... Uh, 100... So if you want them to get through there, make it 200 or 300 wide. If you want it to be tight and you don't really want them getting through an area, close up the gap. You can also put a blocking volume there if you don't want your player to get through. But at least a 100 width gap and they'll be able to get through. So we can actually take this and control C, control V, and we can just make that a negative. 1100 and there we go and now if we wanted to we could just grab all three of them and remember look at your pivot point this one's in the middle so we want it last so control C control V it still changes anyway it's kind of annoying so keep in mind your tiles on the, the floor And let's actually, we can manually enter this number right here. And let's put that at 700. So we have a 300 wide narrow gap. Or if we want it to be a larger street, we could do a thousand. Actually, a lot less than that. Um, so again, if you don't know, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is going to put us back at 0. And yes, these buildings are pivoted around backwards. Um, not a problem. We can actually rotate these 90 degrees each individually. So this would be negative 180. And then I could do the same thing here. Grab that one, negative 180, and there we go. So that's how you can just quickly rapid prototype a, um, a town, you know, things like that. You can make as many different building types as you need to, but by placing them in as prototypes like this, once you do your lighting build, they're all going to have the same basic thing. Um, and it's so much easier now if we come in here and do a new folder and buildings and inside there we could actually have a subcategory and you know you can split it up like okay I got churches and these are banks or whatever it allows you to quickly go through and prototype and have clean access to what you're doing and if you just say you know what screw it I don't like any of these buildings bam you can delete them off and start from scratch all over again without screwing up everything because only the things you need to delete you can find easily all right. I hope you guys found this informative, and said if you want to support the channel, make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Uh, come by my Discord channel. Please do pay attention to the rules. Um, links in the description for the Discord channel. Links in the description for the the coffee sponsor, Strava, and also um, links there for my PayPal account. 
so that you can leave a donation. There's actually a couple different links there that you can use. So, if you like the videos and you want to help support the channel, there's quite a few different ways you can go about it. And I do want to thank everybody for watching. And I hope you do visit me soon. And I hope you really enjoy the videos. Take care.